Hi friend, how are you? This is Monday night's fireside chat. I'm Pat Sloan and on Monday my daily video is on the evenings because when we run the little premiere more of you can come visit than you do in the morning one. So ta-da, here we are. It is the 13th, I believe. Yes, looking at the trusty calendar. Right, so our um, <laughs> our challenge. So first let's do the challenge and then I have a couple project things and a question to answer. So super fun, right? So the challenge today is batting chat. And I forget who asked this question. I didn't put it down, but it generated, somebody had a question about batting for table runners. And I thought, ah, oh, that's a really good challenge because uh, table runners and wall hangings, you know, that smaller things are a little bit different uh, to me than a uh, quilt because a quilt I want to be very drapeable like I want to feel like it's a hug I don't want it to feel like it's stiff as a board uh, uh, table runners and wall hangings I actually prefer to be really firm and flat uh, so batting what goes in there you can just use regular batting and if you're using a drapey batting then those pieces will be more drapey they're not going to be quite as firm uh, but another thing that I do use for both wall hangings and inside uh, table runners is fusible fleece. I really like that for those small projects because it's really firm. Uh, and I will link you down below to fusible fleece. So you will have to uh, press that because the fusible part is like an adhesive. Um, and I press, you know, press that to the backing side. Then I quilt through it just like I would with a regular quilt. Now, I had a, there are two other parts to that question that, that came through. And one was, do I ever make them like a table runner with no batting? Personally, I do not. I want to, for two reasons. One is they're very flimsy. Uh, they're more like a tablecloth then. And I want, to, I prefer them to be more sturdy as a table runner. And two is I like to have the design that you put when you actually machine quilt. So when you, you quilt the item, it gives you texture and it adds a dimension and depth to the quilt, which you would get none of that if you had no batting in it. The other uh, question, let me just be sure, um, was whether you would just use regular fleece as either the batting or the backing for table runners. So regular fleece, if you've, you know, you've gone to the store and you've seen regular fleece, a lot of it's a very novelty oriented. Uh, it is, um, I don't use that very much. Uh, very, very few things do I use regular fleece on. Uh, no, often it pills too much, like when you wash it, it gets real pilly, it gets like little, little balls all over it. Uh, but for a table runner, it doesn't add anything to it for me. It's just still too flimsy. Uh, so I prefer, if I wanna make it firmer, to use the fusible fleece. I will also use like a thicker, firmer uh, batting sometimes. Uh, there's some of the warm and naturals that are more firm. Uh, they're not as drapeable. You, know, you pull them off and they just kind of, the batting just kind of stands like this. Those ones, because <laughs> they, they're going to keep the shape. And that's what I'm looking for for the table runners and, and you know, wall hangings is I want them to stay flat. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's talk about future projects. So up on the wall is bring home the Christmas tree. So uh, Greg was so kind as to help me get this ready to hang up. Cindy uh, quilted it for me at the spa and I have not had a chance to put the binding on. We may have to have like a contest as to what binding do I use? But I wanted you to see it. Maybe Greg, you can just go up a little, go to the red car. And of course, red's my favorite one and scroll in. This fabric is called Dear Christmas, D-E-E-R. And uh, okay, so see that plaid? I use the plaid in all the windows. Isn't that super cute? I'm just like, I'm so excited about the plaid. Uh, there's also some really cute deer. I'll show you, show you the fabric then. You can scroll some other ones, Greg, show some of the other cars. So this line is a bit more pastel than the version that's in the book. So after we look at this up there, well, I'll show you the version in the book. Uh, the, yeah, I like the yellow car too, with all the little light bulb fabric and the little gingham car. Um, okay, and there's a pink car. So it is a bit more, uh, you know, so it's got a different, slightly different look than using the Dear Christmas. Uh, and I love it. I am so excited about it. 
Now the Dear Christmas is going to, I'm going to have some kits. The Fat Quarter Shop ordered the fabric to do some kits. We're going to make the kits, they're going to make like half the kits and then we'll put them on the site to sell while they make the other half of the kits. It takes a little while to cut the kits and put them together. So uh, once they're up there, they'll tell me, I'll put it out online and then you can buy the kits. You don't have to sew with the kit, you do have to sew with the book, but uh, you can make up your own fabric, you can use your stash, uh, or you can just buy parts of Dear Christmas that you like, you know, maybe you just like the plaid and you want to add that to what you're doing. Uh, but it's, it is so cute. We will have a, a limited number of kits and just that. We'll make them and they'll be done. Uh, so let's take a look at the book because I want you to see the original, the original quilt that's in the book so you can get an idea for colorway. Now, if you love uh, much more sort of traditional cozy fabrics, this will be absolutely amazing in that. I could see it in a lot of like cozy plaids. So here is the, uh, this is Lori Holt's book. So th this is the original fabrics. Now there was still a yellow car and turquoise. Now she had a navy uh, and her windows were not plaid. I like the plaid windows. I think they're super cute. So it's not a whole lot different than this one, but if you prefer uh, more warm and cozy fabrics and maybe a tan background, that kind of a thing, this fabric is not available anymore to do kits. That's why we didn't do it exactly like the book. So the book has this in it and we will be, I still don't have a date when we'll start. It'll be at least four weeks from now. So you can bring that up, Greg. So, uh, because once the kit, you know, four to five weeks before we will start. So we'll be sewing, sometime in late August for about four weeks, I think. Probably be August through the end of September or something like that. So there's still plenty of time to get it done uh, and put up. I'm going to do at least one car for like a table runner. So I will uh, organize that. It might have some short trees kind of thing. Uh, right now, I'm not sure when I'm going to do that. I was going to sew that, but you know, I don't know yet when sewing will happen. <laughs> So let me just show you Dear Christmas. <clears throat> His, uh, this is the deer fabric, which is so, so cute. And then I'll just show you a couple pieces. Got the little um, Christmas bulbs and the ginghams and the jingle bells. That's what the red is for the red car. Um, and the, they all come like, I love this green that goes with it. It's much more pastel green for Christmas. And the red, the red ones. Here's pink. Look at the pink deer. I just love the pink deer. And this gingham is so awesome. So, and then back, back to the plaid, Greg. There's the plaid. Show them the plaid. There we go. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And then I use this dot for the background. So that is what is my, my background fabric. And we'll be in the kit. And I'll link you to Dear Christmas so that if you wanted to build some of your own, um, you know, take, take some of those pieces and then add to what you already have. You could do that. So you remember, we need to get things, uh, you know, if you're going to sew with me on this, you want to get your stuff ordered if you haven't done it already. I've been talking about this for a while, so I know a lot of you already have the Vintage Christmas book uh, and you have fabric. You might just be using your stash. Okay, today, uh, sometime early, sometime this morning, uh, we'll be releasing the next row in the Jolly Bar, the Jolly Bar sampler. It is, your blocks are so darn cute. Come over to Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. You can see all the blocks. I just love what you are doing. So we're working on this row and I want to remind you that there are spaces. You can see here that we don't have the layout yet. That is what is on the last week is the layout. Remember these dates are wrong since we had to move this. I didn't reprint it, but uh, you know, you don't have the layout yet, but uh, we're doing these two blocks, which are the migration blocks. And this from this book and the migration quilt. So let's uh, show the blocks, Greg. There we go. So you're doing two sets of migration blocks and that's what the pattern tells you about. So there we go. Here's one. And here's two, super cute, super cute. And these are not pointy, you will see. See this? They're capped. So don't be freaking out that you're not getting a point. This is not supposed to be a point. That is the way the block is designed. So it's a capped block, okay? Just want you to see that so you just don't go crazy. Alrighty, one more 
I'm going to give you a question here that I got, which I thought was really good. Um, Patricia asked, and I actually have a link. I'm going to put it down below here. I have a link to questions that I can do here when I have no arms and the, uh, well, I have no wrists, no hands. <laughs> the ability, I don't have the ability to do a lot of detailed demos. You know, any demo, I had, just has to be very simple. So uh, I have a link down below to a post in my Facebook group where you can put your questions for me. Uh, and I've been going, I'm going through trying to find ones that I can uh, have the ability to answer. So Patricia asked, um, why would you square your quilt after the quilting has been done? This is an excellent, excellent question. So when you put your three layers together, the top, the batting, the backing, and you do the quilting on it, you are actually shrinking your quilt for the most part because you're taking up some space you know as you're quilting or whether you're doing free motion or whether you're doing with your walking foot the fabric is scrunching in a little bit all the time and when that's happening how you quilt the density you quilt across the surface whether you're doing it evenly or whether you're doing like some are more some places more dense than the others what might happen is the quilt might get a little bit out of um, square so to square your quilt at the end is important if you're going to want it to be like hanging on a wall so that it isn't like longer on one side than the other that is what you do when you finish the quilting because now you have all of that area quilted so that would be the reason you do it so that you have you know the, that it actually changes your quilting on it will change the size of the quilt uh, top down. It'll take it down just a little bit. Uh, I could take it down quite a bit if you're doing a lot of uh, heavy, heavy quilting on it. Okay. <laughs> so today you're gonna get the next part of the Jolly Bar sampler. And if you're interested in doing the, uh, bring the Christmas tree, bring home the Christmas tree. That's gonna be so fun. And I can't wait to make that giant pillow we gotta make a red, another red car for a pillow, right? It has to be the red, red car. <laughs> okay, I'm Pat Sloan. Um, down below are all the links. Uh, thank you so much for using them. It's helped support our small family business. I love you. This is such an amazing community. Thank you for joining me. See you online. Mwah.